Hey, this is Kelly here at Rehab United Seattle. Today, uh, we're venturing out into our local community and talking to one of our partners. Uh, I'm here with Alex, who is actually uh, a shoe fit expert and also a four-time Ironman participant and finisher. So she's a big deal. Um, so as you guys know, uh, when you walk into uh, a shoe store, there's a lot of shoes uh, that are on the, uh, on the wall and it can be quite intimidating. So our goal with this video today is to kind of talk about a little bit about uh, how to blend your foot with the, uh, with the shoes and Alex is going to end up talking a little bit uh, about those different shoes and which foot is uh, kind of uh, important for that. The big thing is, is with this is a nice introductory video, but I do recommend if you do have any questions to follow up with Alex and her team here at uh, Roadrunner Sports. So Alex, um, when I have people that come in through the door, uh, whether it be ankle pain, uh, plantar fascia pain, knee pain, um, you know, back pain, I'm always looking at their feet. And um, obviously there's lots of different foot types. We're all blessed with much, many, many different foot types. You get to see a lot, I get to see a lot. So with those foot types, you know, there's ones that are like super pronators, so they have very low arches, they have, and then there's people that have really, really high arches. And then there's also people that kind of fall in the middle a little bit. And I've kind of talked about people about how, you know, their foot interacts. You know, the big thing is I'm trying to bring in with you today is to talk about how that shoe can interact with that foot. So when you have, you've got a couple different uh, pair of shoes here. Can you kind of talk about um, each one of these shoes and, and how that blends with the, with that foot type for me? Yeah. Um, so for people who pronate, we we have two categories of shoes. We have stability shoes and neutral shoes. Um, stability shoes help correct that pronation. They keep that ankle from collapsing in so much. Um, and they do that in one of two ways. They either have what's called a medial post, which is just a little piece of plastic that really helps prevent the ankle from collapsing in. And that, when you're talking medial, you're talking on the inside part of their shoe. Yeah, so you can kind of see it in this one where it's got the posts there. They're all different shapes and sizes depending on the shoe. Um, they either do that or they use guide guide rails or um, in Hoka it's a J frame so you can see this part is a little bit stiffer again the idea is that it keeps the ankle from collapsing in but the guide rails also help prevent overcorrection from throwing that ankle out a little bit too much. Okay so like kind of like if you were going to roll your ankle or something yes. like that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So those are more of like the pronators. What, do you, what else you got here? Um, there's also some neutral shoes. Um, and the difference between all shoes, too, in neutral and stability, you're going to have some stiffer and some more flexible. Could you explain what neutral is? So neutral shoes are for those people who don't pronate, okay. um, whether they supernate or they're just in between, um, just for people that don't need that correction. Okay. Because people with, a, with that don't pronate, if they are in a corrective shoe, what's going to happen is it's going to throw their ankle out when wow. they don't, and it's going to overcorrect them when they don't need that. Perfect. Awesome. Cool, so if I was if you were gonna be in a neutral shoe, um, kind of talk to me a little bit about that um, and like what foot type would uh, like, you would see like if you were uh, from like the overpronator and not too much of the supinator, so that person that kind of falls in the middle, correct? Yeah. Perfect, cool. And then uh, the last one is another, uh, is another Hoka that you have right here? Yeah, so these are both a neutral shoe. The difference um, in the shoes is just gonna be the, the stiffness. Okay. Um, so the Saucony, I grabbed here, the Freedom, mm -hmm. super flexible. Okay. Um, whereas Hoka tends to be really stiff. Okay. Now, you, you threw out a couple really good shoes right there. Now, if I came in off the street and I said, hey, um, Alex, I'm gonna be running in a half Ironman here coming up and I really need to get into like a new shoe. Uh, what's, can you walk me through the process of how you get that person into that right shoe? Yeah, so we here have um, what's called our perfect fit zone. We ask people a couple questions, what they're doing in their shoes, if they have any aches or pains, that sort of thing. Pop them on the treadmill to see if they pronate or, or, or not. And then um, just take a look at their foot, take a look at their arches, what size shoe they're in, kind of the shape of the foot. Because some shoes have a wider toe box, um, things like that to kind of give us a little direction into what type of shoe um, works best for them, like how much cushion they're going to need, that sort of thing. Perfect. And I'll, I'll highlight that a little bit because I've done it. So yeah. it's like there's some video software that that they put up. It's a nice little camera. You're able to bring it up on a big screen and they're able to slow it down and speed it up and really show you what's going on in your foot uh, from, from that standpoint. So it's a very cool, nice little software they have here at Roadrunner to help their shoe fit experts get you into that right shoe. 
Um, okay, so after you found that, uh, after you got them into their right shoe, obviously it's uh, you know it's go time. It's time to go back out on the out on the trail, out on the street, out on the pavement. Um, kind of what's the process that you tell your um, your runners or even your walkers that are looking for uh, for new shoes that break it period? Well, how do you break that new shoe in? Um, I would say definitely start off with a smaller run or walk than what you would normally do just to make sure everything's feeling okay. You don't want to go out on a 10 mile run the first time you put a shoe on and then be realize that the shoe is giving you pain in your arch or giving you a blister or something three miles in because then you've got a, a ways to go before you can get that off your foot. Um, and sometimes with some shoes it does take a little bit of breaking in before you know you can do those longer runs. Um, from, from like, like you brought up a good point, and I, I think this would be good to uh, highlight a little bit, is that if you start to have like a, like a, a mass amount of blisters or like pain in the arch, is that one of those things that's like, oh, this is just my new shoe, I should deal with it? Or is it be like, hey, I should come back and talk to Alex and her team again and you know, and like make sure that this shoe is the right, right fit for me? What do you recommend for people when you come out? If they do experience a little bit of discomfort, how long should they wait before they make sure they come back and talk to you guys? I would give it um, two or three tries okay. out there, just just to make sure it's not just your, the shoe needing to be broken in a little bit. Okay. If it's if it's extending past like three runs, it, it's probably that the shoe is not the right fit for you, and okay. you should definitely come back. Or if it is major pain that is causing you not to be able to move in the shoe, mm -hmm. even if it's that first try, it's probably the wrong shoe, and you can come back. Yeah, to the key is you don't want it to become just a nice staple in your closet. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so the other thing is, is maintenance for our shoes. We live in a very wet environment around here, and uh, you know shoes can get wet um, and stuff like that. What do you recommend for, for maintenance for people's shoes from that weekly, monthly, kind of yearly process of like making sure that they get the most bang for their buck shoes? Yeah. So one thing I recommend, especially for runners, if you run in your shoes. You should just make those your running shoes. Um, if you're walking around, going to the grocery store, doing things like that, you're adding more miles into your shoes than you realize, and they're gonna break down a lot more quickly. And you're also wearing them in a different way than um, what their intended use is, that running. So they're gonna wear more and in places that you're not usually wearing them for the run. Um, but when they get wet, obviously you want them to dry. So I would either um, take out the sock liners, yes. just to, easier way to dry them. Um, either stick them in the sun if it exists in Seattle yes. at that moment. Yes. Um, if not, just, just stick them on top of your dryer or um, I don't recommend putting your shoes in the dryer. Mm -hmm. People can do that, but typically it wears it down faster. Perfect. Um, but yeah, just letting them fully dry before you wear them again. Perfect. And then, so then tell me a little bit like from your standpoint of, of like when I need to know that I need to come back and get a, like a new like what is your recommendation I know sometimes with runners like for me it's like I did an X amount of miles I need to make sure that I come back but like for, uh, for kind of like the layman's terms a little bit kind of let us know like when what are some of the things that we should be looking for either in our shoes or in our body to know that we should be going back and getting a new pair of shoes yeah so for most running shoes it's three to five hundred miles which unless you have like a watch that you regularly wear and you can track exactly how many miles you're running every day it's it's hard to keep track of those Absolutely. miles, um, even for me. So what I tend to do, I personally, I know my body. When I'm starting to do runs and I, my feet are hurting or you know causing other pains in my body, I know, oh, it's time for me to get a new pair of shoes. If you're not quite as in tuned and can just feel that on your feet that you need a new shoe, um, some classic signs are uh, compression in the foam of the shoe. Okay. If you notice that this is really starting to squish, or um, get weird creases in it, it's probably overly compressed, probably need a new shoe. If you've gotten to the point where the bottom of the shoe is worn down, That's you are nice. far beyond the point of needing new shoes, you will need a new shoe before this is worn down. Yes. So That's my favorite when people come in the like, clinic for like, for like pain and I'm like, when's the last time you get a new shoe and you look at it, it's like completely flat. Yeah. If this is starting to wear, you are beyond needing a new shoe. <laughs> perfect, perfect, awesome. Any uh, any other tips uh, that you want to provide for anybody with like when it comes to like right getting the right shoe? Uh, don't come in with any preconceived notions of brands. Okay. Shoes change from year to year, perfect. and people who have been in Asics for years, 
they especially have changed a lot recently. Yes. Or, you know, I've never liked Hoka's, or I researched that these shoes are terrible. Mm -hmm. What worked for the, that person that wrote that review is not necessarily what's going to work for you. Perfect. So I would just try things. Awesome. Awesome. Alex, thank you very, very much for your time today. Um, I hope you guys found this beneficial. Um, once again, thanks Alex and the Roadrunner team here. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, please visit Alex uh, and her team here at, uh, at the Green Lake location. And I do know there's a couple other multiple locations throughout the city for you guys. But they're here to answer any questions. Uh, thanks again. Thanks, Alex.